But its Flemish and Walloon traditions, thick and Latin influences, is a historic land across which the people of Europe for centuries have traded their goods and fought their battles. A landmark on Belgian soil representing a turning point in Europe's turbulent history, the Waterloo Monument, commemorating the final defeat of Napoleon Bonaparte and the fall of despotism in 19th century Europe. In this most densely populated country in Europe, with almost nine million people contained in an area of less than 12,000 square miles, agriculture has always been an important pursuit. Almost every foot of soil is given careful and productive cultivation. Through intensive fertilization, the yield per acre is perhaps the highest on the continent, producing a variety of products and produce, including some of the largest, most luscious strawberries you've ever seen. One of Belgium's major agricultural products is flax, the world's finest in quality, and earmarked almost exclusively for the Belgian linen industry. Spreading the flax to dry and stacking the flax is done by hand with little change in method down through the centuries. Another crop of prime importance is sugar beets. Here again, hand labor harvests the beets, which will be converted into sugar, as well as into a variety of other sugar products, including one of Belgium's important exports, glucose. If you're a lover of flowers, you'll find them here in infinite variety. The growing of bulbs, shrubs, and seeds, in addition to cut flowers, is a major pursuit. These are the flowers of Ghent in the heart of the flower belt, the province of Flanders, flowers for the tables of Britain and the continent. The breeding of livestock for domestic use as well as export is important to the economy of rural Belgium. And fine breeds of cattle, which are excellent milkers, are the basis of the country's flourishing dairy industry. One of Belgium's most picturesque sights is the white-coated milkman, pouring his daily deliveries for the Belgian housewife. With his dog-propelled milk cart, he makes his daily round, unconcerned with things such as dead batteries or gasoline shortages. The thrift and industry of the Belgian people has caused their country to be called the workshop of Europe. These blast furnaces in the city of Liège, some of the largest in Europe, are part of the reason why the metal industries account for almost one-fifth of all Belgian industrial activity, turning out structural steel, machinery, electrical supplies, and railroad equipment. The country is rich in coal deposits. These rich coal deposits provide employment for thousands of Belgian workers as well as a means of creating a favorable foreign trade balance through export of surplus tonnages. The largest single industry in Belgium is the production of textiles, with one out of every five Belgians earning his livelihood in the textile trades. Belgian linens are some of the finest to be found anywhere in the world, and they enjoy this reputation because of the combination of high-quality Belgian flax and the consummate skill of the Belgian worker. What woman the world over does not cherish Belgian lace? This old Flemish lady is the best known maker of lace in historic Bruges. For decades, she has been a part of what is known as the cottage industry, whereby the women folk make lace at home to supplement family income. The Belgian glass industry still claims an important share of the nation's industrial skills. We visit the Val St. Lambert glassware factory at Liège, without question one of the most famous in the world. Originally established more than 600 years ago, the techniques of its founders have been passed down the centuries to be translated into millions of pieces of crystal glassware of the most exquisite design.
Brussels, Belgium's capital with its million inhabitants, is indeed a city of exceptional character and rare beauty. In the very heart of the city, faced by guild buildings dating back several hundred years, is one of the finest town squares in all of Europe. In addition to architectural treasures inherited from a brilliant and historic past, Brussels has numerous great museums and galleries where are found masterpieces of such greats of the world of paint and palette as Van Eyck, Rubens, Van Dyck, and countless others. This is the King's Palace, and we're just in time to catch a glimpse of the changing of the guard. Across the park from the King's Palace stands the Belgian House of Parliament. The Belgian Constitution, patterned on highest democratic principles, provides for a king, a House of Representatives, and a Senate, the duly elected representatives and senators serving four-year terms. With the advent and growing importance of air transport, Brussels becomes more and more a crossroad for international air traffic. Proud of its airport, one of the largest and finest to be found anywhere, this is but another example of the continuing strides that are being taken to ensure the finest facilities and equipment to the exacting traveler. Belgium's second largest city is Antwerp. Antwerp has long been one of the greatest seaports on the continent of Europe. With one of the finest harbors in the world, the city's docks, extending 31 miles along the Scheldt River, handle a world's cargoes measured in millions of tons annually. A natural adjunct to its prominent position in the shipping world is Antwerp's important position as a shipbuilding center. Here are built and repaired some of the finest and largest ships afloat vessels which cross the shipping lanes of the far corners of the globe. But perhaps one of the most important and interesting things about Antwerp is its position as a center of the fabulous diamond cutting industry, ranking second only to Holland. From all over the world, uncut, unpolished stones are sent here to be transformed into industrial and decorative gems of dazzling beauty. So there you have Belgium, invaded without justification twice in a period of 25 years. This land of the Belgians has nevertheless kept faith with the principles of freedom and democracy. In spite of whatever may be in the future, Belgium will remain indivisible, an inalienable domain in this world of ours.